Welcome to Lifelines of Economy. We use different materials and services in our daily life. Some of the requirements are met by bringing goods and services from other places. The movement of these goods and services from their supply locations to demand locations necessitates the need for transport. Some people are engaged in facilitating these movements. They are traders who make the products come to the consumers by transportation. Thus, the pace of development of a country depends upon the production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. Therefore, efficient means of transport are prerequisites for fast development. Today, India is well linked with the rest of the world. Railways, airways, waterways, newspapers, radio, television, cinema and internet have been contributing to its socio-economic progress in many ways. In this chapter, you will see how modern means of transport and communication serve as lifelines of our nation and its modern economy. Movement of goods and services can be over three important domains of our earth that is land, water and air. Based on this, transport can also be classified into the land, water and air transport. Let us discuss them in detail. Means of transport and communication or lifelines of our national economy help in increasing cooperation and assistance between countries, easy movement of goods and material between countries, trade and commerce within the country, reducing distances thus bringing the world closer, both production and distribution of goods and movement of large number of people and over long distances. Roadways India has one of the largest road networks in the world. It is about 54.7 lakh kilometer. There is a growing importance of road transport over rail transport in India because the construction cost of roads is much lower than that of railway lines. Roads can cover more geographically harder locations that cannot be done by the railways. Roads can negotiate higher gradients of slopes and can be easily built in mountains such as the Himalayas. Road transport is economical. It also provides door-to-door -door service. Road transport provides links between railway stations, air and seaports. In India, roads are classified into six classes according to their capacity. Golden Quadrilateral Super Highways It is a network of highways connecting India's four top metropolitan cities namely Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai and Mumbai. The major objective of these super highways is to reduce the time and distance between the mega cities of India. These highway projects are being implemented by the National Highway Authority of India. National Highways National Highways link extreme parts of the country. The National Highways are a network of trunk roads that are laid and maintained by the Central Public Works Department. The historical Sher Shah Suri Marg is called National Highway No. 1 between Delhi and Amritsar. The National Highway 7 between Varanasi and Kanyakumari is the longest highway of India. Delhi and Mumbai are connected by National Highway 8, while National Highway 15 covers most of Rajasthan. State Highways 
rods linking a state capital with different district headquarters are known as state highways these roads are constructed and maintained by the state public works department district roads these roads connect the district headquarters with other places of the district these roads are maintained by the jilla parishad other roads rural roads which link rural areas and villages with towns are classified under this category under the pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana scheme special provisions are made so that every village in the country is linked to a major town in the country by an all season motorable road apart from these Border Roads Organization constructs and maintains roads in the bordering areas of the country. This organization was established in 1960 for the development of the roads of strategic importance in the northern and northeastern border areas. These roads have improved accessibility in areas of difficult terrain and have helped in the economic development of this area. roads can also be classified on the basis of the type of material used for their construction metal roads can be made of cement concrete or even bitumen of coal these are all weather roads unmetal roads or mud roads go out of use in the rainy season road density The length of road per 100 square kilometer of area is known as density of roads. Distribution of road is not uniform in the country. The national average of road density is 142.68 km as on 31st March 2011. it varies from place to place it is only 12.14 km in jammu and kashmir but in kerala it is 517.77 km in kerala road density is above the national average road transportation in india faces a number of problems about half of the roads are unmetalled and this limits their usage during the rainy season the roadways are highly congested in cities and most of the bridges and culverts are old and narrow however in recent years fast development of road network has taken place in different parts of the country importance of railways in india Railways are the principal mode of transportation for freight and passengers in India. Railways also make it possible to conduct different activities like business, sightseeing and pilgrimage along with transportation of goods over longer distances. Indian Railways plays a role of national integration. Railways in India bind the economic life of the country as well as accelerate the development of the industry and agriculture the indian railway is the largest public sector undertaking in the country the first train steamed off from mumbai to thane in 1853 covering a distance of 34 km the indian railway is now reorganized into 16 zones what are the factors which influence the distribution pattern of railway network in india The distribution pattern of the railway network in the country has been largely influenced by physiographic, economic and administrative factors. The density of railway network is high in the northern plains because they are vast level land, have high population density and rich agricultural resources. In the hilly terrains of the peninsular region railway tracks are laid through low hills gaps or tunnels therefore it difficult to construct railway lines 
the himalayan mountainous regions too are unfavorable for the construction of railway lines due to high relief sparse population and lack of economic opportunities it was difficult to lay railway lines on the sandy plains of western rajasthan swamps of gujarat forested tracts of madhya pradesh chatisgarh odisha and jharkhand importance of pipelines in india pipeline transport network is a new arrival on the transportation map of india in the past these were used to transport water to cities and industries now pipelines are used for transporting crude oil petroleum products and natural gas from oil and natural gas fields to refineries fertilizer factories and big thermal power plants solids can also be transported through a pipeline when converted into slurry because of pipelines refineries like baroni madura panipat and gas based fertilizer plants could be located in the interiors of india initial cost of laying pipelines is high but subsequent running costs are minimal it rules out transshipment losses or delays during transportation three important network of pipeline transportation in the country are from oil field in upper assam to kanpur in uttar pradesh from salaya in gujarat to jalandhar in punjab and gas pipeline from hazira in gujarat connects jagdishpur in uttar pradesh